everyone, Psycho Yasin here. I just wanted to show you a behind the scenes look of how I do some of those speed sketches that I've been posting recently. Um, the first thing is, a uh, few people have actually commented about the paper I use. Um, this is a paper texture I created myself by overlaying a lot of different uh, photos of paper. And you can download it at uh, www.cycra.net slash free paper texture dot jpeg or jpg. So that's there for you. And then I have that and I create a layer above that. And I save that as uh, a PSD file. This is just called paper texture template. And now what I've been doing recently is I've been using a brush and it's the same uh, 24 pixel spatter brush that I always use, which is right here. Um, but instead of just having other dynamics checked to pen pressure, what I've started to do is also check this box called uh, color dynamics. Now, if you're having trouble seeing any of these little boxes, I'd recommend to watch this in full screen and HD, and then you'll probably be able to see uh, a bit better some of these uh, small windows and things. But anyway, so uh, I just checked this box. I haven't screwed around with anything here. That's all pretty much default. But then what I do is I select a color for my uh, brush and somewhere in this area, like a red, orange, maybe a bit more to the orange side. And then I select a second color, which is darker and more to the red side and more saturated. So the colors are in this uh, lower right corner, and that means they're going to be pretty dark and pretty saturated. So again, it's the 24 pixel spatter brush with other dynamics set to pen pressure and color dynamics on. Um, so then here I go, I have my layer one and this is the only layer I paint on. The, uh, the thing is that sometimes you'll see me quickly erase the whole drawing, like I'll, I'll start drawing and then I'll just erase it um, by hitting delete. What I do is I start off by pressing control A and that selects the whole canvas. And then I press control H to hide that. So now what that means is this whole thing selected. And since I'm on this layer, all I have to do is hit delete and everything disappears. Uh, this uh, is automatic in a program called Autodesk uh, Sketchbook Pro where you just create new layers and you can draw then just hit delete everything disappears um, but in Photoshop it's not set up that way if I didn't have this selected control D and I drew something and then I hit delete nothing's gonna happen so what I have to do is hit control A for select all and then I hit control H, which is hide, and that just hides the selection so I don't have to see that uh, the marching ants. And then I draw. Now, something that's happening here is that, and this, this tends to happen a lot, especially when I um, use Camtasia to record, is that the pressure sensitivity option disappears. So, um, all I have to do is restart Photoshop and usually that solves it yeah so now it's working just have to make sure I'm on the right layer then control A control H and now you'll notice with the color dynamics option on is that if I press lightly or press hard, the color actually changes a little bit. It's pretty subtle, but it does make a bit of a difference. 
for me I just want to get the most natural uh, pencil type feel and I usually work at about 10 pixels so this is what the line looks like I like it and what else here's another thing see um, I'm using I think a 24 inch monitor so my paper texture is really big and if you download it uh, you'll find that out that it's really big so um, on my screen right now the paper fits at 25% uh, and if I go to the next zoom level up which is 33% then my brush is going to look a bit different you see um, it's kind of grainy I find that when things are at 25%, 50%, or 100%, they look the best. When you have your zoom set to 33% or 66%, things don't look so uh, good. So I'd recommend try and keep uh, things at about 25 or 50% if possible. The reason you want it so big is just because when you have such a big um, screen, the brushes will behave much differently than if you had a small document. And I've already gone over this in my previous video about uh, my Photoshop brush settings. Um, now, something else is that I often get asked about the brushes. And I've explained it a lot, that it's this 24 pixel spatter brush. But I know there's a lot of other brushes out there, and I do have a lot of custom brushes that I actually never use but if you're interested in that and you want to know where can I get some cool brushes well there's a site called um, www.pandemoniumart.net and slash brushes and then there's a section here that has really good brushes and they're by awesome guys like um, uh, Baron Thierry and uh, Jamie Jones. If you don't know Jamie Jones, this guy is probably he's a hero of mine. He's he's like an artist that the pros are like, wow, he's awesome. So yeah, you should check out his work at uh, www.artpad.org. But he's an awesome artist, and yeah, this is cool that pandemoniumart.net put out uh, these brushes. And actually, if you Google search for brushes, you'll probably find a lot of resources available to you. Um, but the reason I like uh, pandemonium.net or pandemoniumart.net's brushes is because they have brushes of artists that, that I really respect and admire. So, so that's cool. And then, what else? Let me talk a bit about the scribbling. So really, when I start, I am just scribbling. And I'm just getting my hand to move. And I don't know if you've read, you may have read a book by Betty Edwards called Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain. But it talks about this idea that um, you have the right side of the brain that tends to take over more creative tasks and you have the left side of the brain and the left side is more rational and logical it's involved in things like uh, language and math and the right side is involved in things like art and music and dreaming so I'm trying to use more of my right side of the brain and really turn off that left side because the left side, what that wants to do is say, okay, I'm going to draw a head. And then it'll think, okay, what view? Maybe I'll start with a circle. Let me get my guides down. My eyes go this area. Get my nose, mouth. And that's my left side thinking how I draw a head. Now, the right side 
Well, that doesn't, I don't really think it thinks about drawing your head. Maybe it does. I don't know. But if I was using my right side, I would just let things happen and see shapes. And see, I started out with, I don't know, kind of like a this shape. What do you call that? Like a bean shape, I guess. And I was just scribbling. And then I place the eye sockets and then maybe a nose would go here like I'm really just looking at these scribbles and trying to find things and I'm letting my arm do whatever it wants and I'm hoping that whatever that is turns into something so now this is turning into a face and honestly I think this is more interesting than when I started out with the traditional uh, approach which isn't bad I mean I recommend this and I still think you can't do this scribbly stuff unless you have a knowledge base if you're just working from from no knowledge and you haven't been drawing for a while then I'm not sure how you would go about creating an image like this because I don't know maybe it's possible I mean when you think about it when you dream you're creating images of people and the colors perfect the values are perfect the proportions are perfect so obviously your brain can create images from nothing that look entirely convincing and part of my struggle has really been okay I understand that my brain is capable of doing these things for instance also when you, you think about someone and you might get a brief uh, snapshot of their image in your mind well that was created right it was created from your brain it's not just coming out of nowhere and I used to do things like I would I would just imagine people or imagine faces and try and draw them and I would even imagine things like a cup and I try and rotate that in my head so I could see the different views and honestly in the beginning it just didn't work and I would wonder ah how come this doesn't work how come I know my brain can do this but it's just not it's not cooperating but as I drew uh, more and more then eventually I got to the point that I could close my eyes and visualize an object like a cup for instance and I could spin it around in my head and see all the different views um, that gets more complicated when you're dealing with things like a face but still it's uh, it's something that is possible and somehow drawing a lot seems to unlock some of these abilities and I think everyone can do this it just requires a lot of time and this is something I guess I should talk about as well because really when people talk about brushes and they're like oh what brush are you using or what's that paper texture often they want the secret they want the secret answer that's gonna help them suddenly improve a lot and become an awesome artist and there are things that can help um, for instance learning proportions learning anatomy that for sure helps even things like this okay using a paper texture uh, sticking to percentages in Photoshop like 25 percent 50 percent this all helps but if you're not drawing all the time then it's not gonna help you that much it's not gonna magically make you a better artist and usually everything you want to know when you look at tutorials and it's like the things you're hoping for that ah this is I hope this helps me I hope this helps me improve often that's something that usually it's just years and years of practice and then you do get whatever you want to get such as understanding values or uh, being able to be good with color or creating dynamic compositions really just takes years and years of practice and there's no way around this um, but there are things that can help you um, especially with painting I was so afraid of painting for such a long time 
I would stick with pencils and things. So whenever I moved to color, my immediate, uh, my first choice was always colored pencils because it's like, well, that's like, um, that's like a pencil. It's basically just shading in. And that's something I was used to, that I would draw something and then find a color. See, I'm not even coloring in the lines. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's what I was used to. And then when I wanted to move further, I went from colored pencils to oil pastels. Um, and other pastels, I felt comfortable with those because it's like, well, this is kind of like paint, I guess, but it's a dry medium. It's something I'm more comfortable with. Really, I think oil painting and colored pastels to color, it's harder. It's not that easy. Something you want to get used to doing is getting over your fears of trying new things and trying things that are kind of kind of scary because you're not used to them at, at first. But remember that it just takes practice. It might take a lot of practice, but it does take, really it's just practice. And same with um, the Wacom. I hate calling it that. I like to call it Wacom, but yeah, I've heard the, the people from the company call it Wacom. So yeah, uh, Wacom tablets, the thing with them is Again, it's just practice. It's not that buying a tablet is instantly going to make you a better artist. It's not. If anything, um, it might make things more difficult in some respects. And drawing, just drawing with a pencil and paper is really what's going to help you. So pretty much that's mostly what I wanted to talk about and I think I've explained how I go about these things right scribble see when I'm mad I tend to do more <laughs> more straight lines more angry strokes I get more triangle shapes Anyway, uh, yeah, I wanted to talk about one more thing, which is the uh, classes. I offered a survey um, to gauge people's interest in taking private lessons with me. Now, just to update you on that, um, the company that I was planning to work with, and I'm still planning to work with them, but um, the screen sharing function isn't, right now it's not working, so... I've been told around January it will be ready, but that's really what I'm what I'm waiting on right now, is uh, that screen uh, sharing because from the results of the survey, uh, the majority of people wanted to take uh, digital lessons with me, not traditional, and so I figured that I would probably. Uh, be the most helpful if I just had a uh, screen sharing where they would see me uh, drawing just like this on Photoshop and I could bring in the work uh, the students created and draw over that and it would just be a lot more convenient than if I were drawing this traditionally and I set up a camera and then my hand would be in the way or something like this. Um, so I probably would if, if, if this does work out with the lessons, I would be offering uh, lessons that are digital. And your drawing doesn't have to be digital, it just has to be somehow in the computer. So maybe you can scan it or take a photo of it. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much where it's headed. And now I'm just waiting uh, for the screen sharing capability to be, to be there. In, in the site so so that's that I've got some other projects I'm working on but I will tell you about those later but I hope um, this gave you a bit of insight into how I go about doing these speed sketches and 
I have this feeling that people will never believe me that I just start scribbling and finding shapes within that. I think the shapes you find really go, um, what am I trying to say? It really depends on what you draw a lot because you'll see different shapes and it's just like people looking in, in clouds or or at a, a Rorschach ink blot, right? You see different things and often what you see is a reflection of what is within you anyway. So I guess that that in a way I am not just scribbling randomly because there's some part of of my brain that must be trying to express itself and so yeah I guess it's not completely random but as far as what I'm conscious of I really don't know where things are going I'm just I'm just looking for things and then creating random stuff and finding stuff within that Alright, so I hope that explains things, and thanks for watching.